this is Frank Prendergast for Daily Extra at City Hall with Councillor Kristen Wong Tam. Uh, thank you for being with us. Thank you very much. What is your understanding from the audio tape? You've heard it, I'm assuming? Uh, yes, a little clips of it. Obviously, much of it is uh, censored by the media because of profound, um, uh, uh, profane language. Okay. At the beginning, he seems to say, their fucking uh, flag. And he's referring to the pride flag. Is that correct? I, is that your understanding? I, I did not audit the, the, the audio as, uh, as closely as some may have. Uh, so I cannot make out exactly what the... Uh, the what the uh, alleged audio sounds like, uh, but certainly that's, uh, that's what it probably alludes to. Okay. Uh, what are your feelings about this? I mean, you know, clearly the mayor has, uh, has demonstrated time and time again that he does not have a lot of understanding uh, for the LGBTQ two-spirited community. It's very clear that he is not accepting of this community. Um, and, uh, you know, he has consistently uh, done all that he can, either in private or perhaps in public now, uh, to demonstrate that this is not a community of interest or care for him. Um, how is the LGBT community? Um, expected to accept that he can be kept on as mayor even if he's uh, temporarily away from his position this is outrageous what's happening uh, how are we expected to react to this well, I mean, certainly there is an electoral process, and uh, you know, I, I cannot say that uh, we have politicians of all stripes uh, that are that they all work within an anti-oppression framework, that they are all free from discrimination and bigotry and hatred. Uh, we'd like to think that that is the case, and that's why we go into public service. Uh, and every now and then, there is somebody who actually harbors certain feelings that uh, are probably, uh, you know, not necessarily of a benevolent nature. So I think you know. The community is, is uh, rightfully, um, uh, you know, uh, righteous in its demonstration of outrage or, or disappointment, um, and uh, and those feelings are valid. It, it is very legitimate to have a guttural reaction to what we've seen and heard. Um, I think that the community is much more than just one person, and certainly Mayor Ford has now demonstrated time and time again he is not fit to serve, not just because he is. Uh, express language in racist, misogynist, or homophobic natures, but rather uh, the fact that he continues to break the rules. Uh, he is um, wanted for questioning by the Toronto police, and uh, you know he's not shown up for duties, and in many ways he's, he's actually abdicated his responsibilities as mayor uh, for some time now, and it's not just because of the, uh, the drugs and alcohol um, you know, abuse, but rather because he just doesn't seem to be interested or he is in literally over his head. He is not qualified. Um, in the past, you've given him uh, leeway. It seems you've said, well, let's listen to what he has to say. Um, in retrospect, was this the right approach to take? Um, I certainly think that what, uh, what we do need to extend to the office of the mayor, regardless of who is there, uh, we have to understand that there is an education process. Um, and uh, I didn't know Rob Ford very well in 2010, and certainly in 2011, I spent a lot of time trying to uh, introduce the community to him. I felt that perhaps he was just he led a sheltered life. Maybe he didn't have the uh, uh, the cultural opportunities and exchanges. Uh, you know, two years into it, I mean, it was very clear to me that he just was not interested. I think that we still need to extend courtesy to the office of the mayor. Uh, but you know, at this point in time, uh, after what uh, was said about Justin Trudeau, and that's really when my my attitude started to shift, uh, was that uh, he is clearly just not interested in the community. Um, and I would say that he actually operates from a place of disdain uh, for the community. Um, it's not just that he doesn't get us, he actually hates us. Um, so yeah, I think you can, um, I think everyone is, is, uh, is now able to very succinctly uh, evaluate uh, what is before us. There's been consistent actions and consistent language uh, that's been used by the mayor that's been very uh, hateful, discriminatory, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and hurtful. Um, would you say you regret your actions? No, I don't regret them. I mean, I think that what's important is that we take our time to introduce the community for those who may not understand us. And I have no certainly regret on whatsoever on treating someone with courtesy and respect. What matters is not just as, uh, and what also matters just as much as how the mayor responds is how I respond and how you respond and how every single viewer of this clip, uh, segment responds. Uh, we can all, you know, get angry and we can all get upset, uh, but somebody has to be left at the table to continue the dialogue. And I never 
never use language that is so hurtful or so spiteful, um, that is full of vendetta that it does not allow me to come back and speak to you the next day. So for that reason, I don't reg regret at all uh, the way I treated the mayor. I believe I treated him fairly, with courtesy and respect, with a high degree of professionalism. And uh, you know, he, uh, I gave him that courtesy and I extended him that privilege. Uh, and obviously, uh, that has now changed. Um, there obviously is fear within the LGBT community when the mayor comes forward with the statements that he has come forward with. And as well, he's not alone. There is something called Ford Nation, and he has supporters. What do you say about the fact that it's just not the mayor, but there's other people harboring what, uh, the same sentiments that he is expressing? Well, I certainly can't control the, the actions of Ford Nations or even the personal beliefs of Ford Nation, whoever these Ford nationalists are and wherever they may be. Um, I can only control the actions of myself and I take responsibility for that. And I think that we should all be asking ourselves this one question. Uh, if your words and actions were printed on the front page of every single newspaper tomorrow, would you still say and do what you're going to do today? And if we actually live our lives with those guiding principles, with that guiding question, I think that we would be all in a great place. So I can't respond for Ford Nation. That's something that, you know, whatever this Ford Nation could be in terms of the mythology. But certainly I can say that as, a, as an individual and a, and a citizen of Toronto, I'm very proud of my city. Toronto is a very forward-thinking place. Toronto is going to be hosting World Pride this summer. It is going to be one of the largest LGBTQ two-spirited celebrations in the Americas uh, and certainly one of the largest events the city of Toronto will host. And uh, we want to be able to demonstrate to the world that Toronto is a place of, uh, of diversity, of inclusion, that we celebrate a democracy and we celebrate all our communities. Uh, I share your enthusiasm that the world is coming here but uh, I'm afraid that what's happening here is we're being revealed as something uh, uh, that we're, we're, we're not who we're touting to be, this diverse accepting community. What do you think this is doing to the reputation of world pride when we're expecting the community to come from around the world. When you have a mayor that was elected and continues to act like this, what is the message that's sending? And does this really endanger the success of World Pride? Well, I think that message is really about um Mayor Ford is responsible for his action. He represents himself. And what we are saying at the City of Toronto, and you need to know that there's 44 other councillors, there's a very large corporations, thousands of people actually work for the City of Toronto. Those values that the mayor is, is espousing does not um, and is not shared by, by thousands of others across the city and certainly neighbourhoods across the city. What we have in the City of Toronto is a city that is actually supporting World Pride with uh, financial compensation, with resources, with policing uh, deployment. Uh, with all sorts of um, festival uh, resources to make sure that the 10-day celebration goes off without a hitch, that the parade is, uh, is safe and that we are able to come together, demonstrate the true spirit of Toronto, uh, you know, and that means that we're deploying our city resources. There's a special team that's been convened working in sync with World Pride and Pride Toronto organizers for well over a year. The City of Toronto is sponsoring the opening ceremonies at Nathan Phillips Square. Melissa Etheridge is our opening act. There will be fireworks, all of that is being taken care of by the City of Toronto. We are hosting a grand pride wedding celebration at an award-winning city facility called Casa Loma, built in 1914, where up to 200 LGBT couples can get married on site, free to them, and that's all being taken care of by the city and Liberty Entertainment. So that's the other face of the City of Toronto, one that does not get as much airtime, unfortunately, but that's the one that I want people to pay attention to. Uh, we need a party. Uh, um, after all this, because um, it's been just so uh, and we're good at frustrating. It. We're great at parties. We're, we're great at parties. Um, I, I, I do want to um, just get your opinion on the media coverage of this, um, the, the homophobic uh, slant to his comments in the past. This is not registering it, with the mainstream media. Uh, we've been watching the media. Why is the homophobic element of this not getting through to see what's, what's going on here? Well, you are stop, you're talking about the mainstream, and the mainstream will have mainstream reaction. It will be very conventional. So there are certainly lots of people within the LGBTQ community that are calling out um, the mayor on his homophobia. They're not certainly staying silent. I certainly am not staying silent. I've raised it on, on several occasions now. I've said it on, I put it on the floor of council that this is someone who actually has now demonstrated a certain disdain for the community. Uh, if uh, the media, the, the mainstream media picks it up, then, you know, that's, that's wonderful. But all I can do and all we can do and all you can do is continue to raise it, be resilient in that in that voice of, uh, of opposition and, and you know I think what we will do is get there with a spirit of celebration and love 
because certainly, you know, rising in anger is, a, is an appropriate place at times, but this is just one individual, and it's an individual who clearly needs help. It's an individual who's completely out of sync with the character of Toronto, in my opinion, and certainly that's not the pulse, and that's certainly not the, those are not the beliefs of your average Torontonian from, from east to west, north to south. I don't believe he represents the values of Toronto at all.